I'm going to show you how to make request types within Jira Service Management. Do you get many customer requests in languages that your agents can't speak? Then language translations for JSM by our good friends over at Resolution is the perfect app for you. It allows you to leave a great impression on your customers without having to hire folks to speak every specific language that your customers speak. Check it out in the marketplace and oh, by the way, there's a 20% discount in the description down below, so make sure you use that when you start your trial. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section down below. Within the world of Jira Service Management, which works very similar to Jira software, we have issue types. But as an extra layer of, I don't want to call it complexity, but just functionality, we also have something called request types. And you're going to want to use request types the moment that you are leaving just the basic have your users email and requests. Because the request types is really what's going to augment and really enable a lot of true power to your Jira service management projects and the user portal that hopefully your customers are gonna be using to get information to you via Jira service management. So let's go take a look at JSM, what I'm gonna be calling it from now on, and learn how to create request types. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to make your life a little bit easier. So here we are inside of a JSM project. And in order to do request types, all you gotta do is go to your project settings and you're going to notice that right below issue types, which every Jira software project has, and they all function exactly the same. But now we're going to have an extra item here called request types. So we're not going to click on issue types. We're going to go to request types. And, and I'm going to show you how to make your new request type. Now, making request types is super, super simple. And the ones that you see here are request types that just came with the template that I used. But oftentimes your company, your business is going to be unique enough that the out of the box stuff is not going to be really helpful. So you have two options when it comes to cleaning up your out of the box request types. You can either A, click on these ellipses here and delete it, or you can change the portal group and you can click on this portal group and you can just get rid of it. And if you deselect all the options, that is going to basically hide that request type. So it's still available, but you'll notice that it's down here, request types hidden from the portal, because that's your pro tip number one. If a request type does not have a portal group, then it's gonna be hidden from the portal. So you have to go and create a group. Now I'll have a separate video on how to create groups in the future, but you do have some out of the box portal groups from the get go. So you're not, this is not a prerequisite. This is going to be more of an augmentation to your portal. So we'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, you just need to know that your general portal group is going to be just perfect for what we're going to try to do as I'm trying to explain to you what a request type is. So again, don't worry about the fact that we don't know what portal groups are just yet. You're going to have one available to you. So anyways, all you got to do now is again, whether you clean up or whether it's blank, it's up to you. But in order to create a request type, you're going to click on this request type button up here. And it obviously goes without saying you do need to be a Jira admin in order to be able to do this, because if you're not, then you're not even going to be able to get this far. So make sure you have the right permissions before you come at me in the comment section, tell me that it is not showing up for you. So once we click on that create request type button, we're going to get this lovely modo and you're going to want to name your request type. Now this should be something that should describe to your customer what it is they're requesting. So whether they want a password change, whether they want a new computer or a new phone, it's up to you. Maybe I'm just going to do password resets. So that's going to be under my name. The description, like every other video that I have, is totally optional. If you name your things wise enough or simple enough, then you shouldn't need a description because clearly a password reset is a password reset, but feel free to add a description. Now this next step, this icon is where you have a little bit more creativity. You can click on this change icon. You can upload your own photo. So if you're, if you got like an in-house like design team or somebody that helps you with your, with your icons and stuff, you can do that. Or you can just simply click on these ellipses down here and see all the different, what they call avatars that they have available. Now, because, Password is usually to me, tells me like a lock. I'm gonna go see if I can find a lock symbol here. There's a key, that one will do, but here's the one with the key and the lock. So we'll do that one, click on save, and then the icon's ready to go. The next step 
and this is probably the most critical step, folks. So I'm going to try to explain this as slowly and as clearly as I can. The next step in this process is use the workflow and fields from this issue type. This is very, very key because once you create a request, you cannot change the issue type that it's associated to. You're going to have to like basically delete it and start all over. So pay careful attention to this last and final step before we click next because you're going to want to lock this in and you're going to want to come in to creating your request type knowing the issue type that it belongs to. Now this part is critical because if you know anything about your administration, which hopefully you do here because everything from Jira software does apply to Jira service management here, but your workflows, the statuses, right? To, to do in progress, done, whatever statuses you want, those are all tied not to the request type, but to the issue type. Your fields are tied to the issue type. A lot of the inner workings of Jira are tied to your issue types, but we're creating a request type and you gotta think and visualize your request type sits on top of the issue type. So your issue type is the foundation and you can add one or many request types on top of it. And so it's very, very important that you pick the right issue type because as you may know, Different issue types have the ability, have the potential to have different workflows, different fields, different statuses. So you're gonna wanna make sure you pick the right one here because like I mentioned earlier, if you pick the wrong one, you simply can't open up the request type and change it. You basically have to delete it and start all over. So save yourself a headache and pick the right one from the get go and pick the right one here. But now in my specific example, I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite because I don't care. I am just making an example here. So I'm gonna pick just a random one, but please, you should not pick a random one. You should be very intentional, very prescriptive in which issue type you are picking based on the statuses, based on the fields, based on, again, different settings that you want enabled for this request type. So once you do make your selection, click next. And now this is where you're gonna to have to put it in a portal group. Now you probably don't have another portal group. Again, we're gonna cover creating groups in a future video, but just click on general for now, as that is the only thing you need to do in order to bring in that request type into your portal. And I'll show you what, what that looks like in a second. So once you pick your portal group, all you gotta do is hit create. Now we're not quite done at this point. So this has basically created the request type and it's just like a barren request type. We want to add some functionality to it. And this is kind of where you get very creative. This is where you're gonna need to like talk to your decision makers to whoever is requesting this request type because this is where you're gonna make it personalized. This is where you're gonna make it effective, if you will. Cool new feature that's been introduced. So the first time you're doing this, you can now access and use fields from any of your company managed service projects. So you can just bring them in. So this is kind of cool before you had to be very intentional, very prescriptive. That field needed to be existing in the screens for that specific project, so it was a bit of a pain. But now you can kind of search for everything everywhere, so that's kind of cool. Remember, if your agents need to engage in conversations with customers that don't speak their native language, you can make everyone's lives easier with language translations for JSM. And it's not just about the translations. You can build queues for customers by language or simply automate assignments so that your specific language speakers are automatically given that specific ticket based on their specific language. Check it out in the Atlassian Marketplace and don't forget that there's a 20% code in the description down below. Anyways, um, if this is the first time you've seen your request type, let me walk you through this interface real quick. So you're gonna be able to go back to your request type. So that's gonna give you that long list of all the request types that you have available, but you don't, you don't wanna do that. So you're gonna ignore this section first. You can see the workflow. So if you just wanted to get a sanity check of like, hey, did I pick the right issue type? Well, you can click on this view workflow and it's gonna show you that workflow that is gonna be impacted or influenced on this on this specific uh, request type. So you can say, okay, yeah, this is good. Or you're gonna have that sudden realization of like, uh oh, this is not the right one. And this is this would be the right time to start all over. This would be the right time to abort ship, abandon ship, delete that request type and start all over and pick the right one. Because if this doesn't look right, then the rest of the, what I'm about to show you becomes a moot point. So make sure you pick the right workflow there. And now we get down to the request form. Now I'm gonna show you the request form, I'm gonna show you the issue view, and then I'm gonna talk about workflow statuses, but we're gonna start off with request form because that's usually the part that gets configured the most. So your request form is basically gonna show you the title, so this is what's gonna be displayed to your customer, so when they come and fill out a request, they're gonna see this password resets up here. Obviously they see the icon that we picked. And then you're gonna be able to add a description. So this is just helpful text 
to let customer know what this request is for. Now, unlike the description, this one's actually recommended because you can't expect your customers to know what the heck they're doing. You always gotta assume that your customer is has no idea what they're doing and that they're gonna make a mistake. And so try to be as helpful as possible in this request type description is gonna be very, very helpful. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in a minute, but you wanna fill this one out. Below that, we have instructions, so we can get at even more instructions on how to use the form. Now, you only get one set of instructions, so you're gonna to wanna to be as clear and simple as possible, but do know that in addition to the description, you can also then add um, instructions. Now, this is different because the description that we did first, the one that I said helpful text to let the customer know what the request is for, they're gonna see that when they are looking at a list of all the request types. But once they click on one, then they're gonna see the instructions. So you don't see the instructions until you go into it. So that's kind of the difference there. So again, add some instructions here. And again, this is gonna help your customers a whole, be a lot more productive. And then once you have that, then literally all we usually have is a summary. And that again is a title. And that's all you have. That's really all you get at, at first, right? But sometimes we wanna capture more information. So we wanna have them give us a description. So all you need to do is on the right side here under fields, simply grab the field that you want and bring it on over to this section over here. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna start building out our portal. We're gonna start building out the information, the fields, the data that we're gonna be collecting from your end users. And so you're gonna be able to use anything that exists in Jira already, or this is a great opportunity for you to go take a timeout, go create custom fields, put them into the right screen, and then be able to bring them in so you can use those custom fields in here. But we're gonna use, for this example, we're just gonna use the out of the box stuff. So I'm gonna bring in the due date. I'm gonna want the customer to basically tell me when they think it's due and help me tell me the priority. So again, super simple stuff, nothing nothing over the top. And notice that I don't care about the signing yet because my customers shouldn't care who works on it. Attachment is gonna be good, right? So maybe I want them to attach something so I can let them do that. But some of the other fields are gonna be more private. They're gonna be from an agent perspective and not so much the customer perspective. So that's pretty much it. You're gonna to wanna to click on save changes here. And at this moment, once you hit save there, I recommend then you click view because that view is gonna now show you what this form is actually gonna look like. So, so you'll see who raised on this request behalf of, you'll see the summary, the description, the due date, the priority, and then the ability to add attachments. Now, the next thing that you can do is maybe we want other fields required. Well, if you remember from previous videos that I've made on how to make a field required, it works differently in JSM. You don't have to go through all the hoops of adding required fields to the workflow. You don't have to go and add them into your field configuration, but rather much simpler. All you gotta do is say, hey, I want the due date to be required. You expand this little button and then you can just click on this required checkbox here and that will make the field required and that's all you gotta do there. So super, super easy to make field required in the portal. And the best part is it's not universal. So some requests could have it required, other ones don't have to have it. And so you get to pick and choose however you want. So this is really, really cool because if you were to do the the, the field configuration like in Jira software, then every single project would have, or every single request would have to have it required. You might not want that. So this is much cooler. Now, the other thing that we can do while we're here is we can actually alter the portal field name. So we obviously have a, a due date field. This is the name of the field in Jira, but let's just say like, when do you want this by? Question mark, right? So you can make it super easy, super much more intuitive, much more native language English for them. And you can just give them again, helpful information and you can add descriptions. So like, let us know when you want this by. So you can put information again, being more helpful because just assume that your customer has no idea what they're doing because that is honestly the best policy. I'm not, no shade at people that are filling out forms, but just playing devil's advocate here. If it can go wrong, it's gonna go wrong. So just save yourself some headaches down the road and add as much information as you can because you'll thank me later. Okay, so when you're done with all that, again, every single one of these fields is gonna be able to do the same thing. You can make them required, change the name and add some descriptions, and then you can hit save changes and your form is done. So now when your users come to your form, they're gonna be able to basically see the form. Now you're gonna see the red asterisk on the summary and you're gonna see the red asterisk on the due date. Then you're gonna see the altered text on the due date, which now instead of it saying due date, it says when you want this by, you can see this little extra information here that tells us that this is when you want this by. And if you remember the instructions that I added are show up right here. Now, if you wanna see 
the description that I added, well, you have to go up a level. So we have to click on our demo service project here. And we're going to click on this need, need to raise a request, contact us. So we'll click on that. We'll click on general. And then here under password reset, this is where we're going to see helpful text to let the customer know what the request is for. Once they click on that, that's when they now see the instructions and then they'll be able to fill out the information. Okay, so that's the request form. That's literally all you really need to worry about from an end user perspective. But if optionally, this, this next step and these next couple of steps, I hardly ever rarely do. I'm just gonna mention them really briefly, but you do have this issue view. Now this now starts to behave like the issue view or the issue layout inside of your software, which is what did the agents get to see when a request is filled out? So obviously they're gonna see all the fields that came in and it's just gonna look and feel just like a Jira software project. So you're gonna have your assignee, you're gonna have, again, statuses and stuff like that. So I don't really ever muck around with the issue view here because the defaults that JSM gives me is gonna be good enough, but you can always come in and change your issue view here. Now the workflow statuses is interesting. The workflow status is gonna show you the statuses that, you, that are built into your workflow based on the issue type that we picked, but you can alter the text that is displayed to the customer. So this is kind of interesting if you want to, again, just if you want to give them simpler versions of your statuses, this is going to allow you to override that. And that's pretty much it. So once you do that, your request type now exists. It's going to be right here. And this is the one I made. And that's that's really all you need to know because at this point, now that that request type exists, you, now it's available in the portal. And when somebody goes to fill out the portal, they're going to fill it out just the way I showed you right now. They're going to be able to select it, fill out the information, and now your agent's going to see it. So when something does come in, now at the portal inside of Jira, inside the agent view, right? This is not for your licensed user. They're going to be able to like, they're going to come in, they're going to see a new request coming in. But over here in the request type, it is not going to have whatever new request type we made. And these request types are restricted. They are restricted to the issue type. So you'll notice that I am missing my password reset because if you look over here, this is the IT help. Now, if I were to find a service request one that i made earlier then you're going to see that when i go to the request type here i can actually see now my password reset that but this is again is only possible because that request type is tied to the issue type so it's a two for one like you gotta you gotta think of both if you only worry about issue types or you only worry about request types then you're not gonna have a pleasant experience so you gotta worry about both the issue type and the request type and understand how they both go together and that's pretty much it so keep in mind that you can change the issue type so then you get access to the new request type. But again, if you carefully architect your, your request types and your issue types and you pay attention to them, then you shouldn't have these big problems and or just consult with a professional. So anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it explained request types and issue types a little bit more and showed you how to actually make request types for your JSM projects because trust me, you're gonna want this. You're gonna wanna create request types. It, it takes JSM to a whole nother level. Getting tickets in Arabic, Chinese, or Spanish? No problem. With language translation for JSM, your agents will engage with your customers as if they were natives. Simply install the app from the Atlassian Marketplace and define your project default language and go. Oh, and while you're doing that, make sure you check out the description down below because our good friends over at Resolution have provided us with a 20% discount that you can use when you sign up for language translation for JSM. Don't miss this chance as they only have a few left. And so I just need to remind you that this is part of the Summer of Alaskan 2.0 series. So make sure you smash in that subscribe button down below. It is the best way for you to help support the channel. Totally free for you. It takes one second. All you got to do is click on that subscribe button down below. Make sure you drop a like and make sure if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need